This 4230, new to me, auction tractor. Pretty good leak here at the hydraulic pump coming down. So we'll go ahead and pull that. I think I'm gonna pull this axle and go forward, take it out the bottom. You can take them out the top too, but with the loader and everything, I think it's easier to come out the bottom. Apologize, I couldn't get a good angle to film these, but you'll undo these four lines. Steering line, and then the diesel fuel line, and the little pressure return line, and then we can roll the axle forward. For disassembly of this pump, number your caps and the spots on the pump case. Then I like to use a muffin tin, as you can see, to keep these organized and make sure everything goes back in the same hole it came from. Checking the end play before you take it apart is not mandatory, but it'll show you a good starting point so you can hit that 3000 spec you're supposed to have, so it'll save a couple of tries going back together because you know about how many shims you need. Here's that nick on the shaft. Been sanding it with this 320 out of my Dynafile. It's coming away. So before we change this bottom seal and go back to assembly, we've got to set our bearing preload. It was at 18 thousandths, taking it apart. And it's supposed to be one to three. So here's my original stack of shims. Just some Vaseline to hold them down. And then since we're at 18 thousandths, I've got a 10 and a six. 
should put us right at two, right in the middle of our allowable range. Got it seated, got vice grips on there so we can pry. Right about two thousandths, so we're in the range. We can go ahead, pull this back apart, put our new seal in, put it back together, put it in the tractor. Then while this is still held down easy, go ahead and pull the inlet filter. You can see it's been doing its job. So we'll go ahead and wash that up, put it back in, ready to go another day. Two new filter seals, filters all clean. Now that we've measured our preload, we can knock this back apart, put the new shaft seals, start assembly. So these seals are why we did the pump shaft first so we got this quad ring it'll go through in this lower bore then this backup ring goes on the external side Might be easier to do the backup ring first. It's a little more rigid. And we've got the external oil seal.
Under here is the inlet valves. I had the cap off. I just checked them with solvent in the solvent tank, but I did not knock them out and check them that way. They were holding solvent, and my main issue was this pump shaft, and this is personal tractor, so no reason to take extra things apart I didn't need to. So there's those inlet valves. They're in a pocket. They look a lot like a automotive style valve. You can fill this with solvent and just watch. Make sure the level doesn't leak and you'll be okay. As long as they're holding fluid, they're going to seal. Because when the pressure's down, the pressure pushes them closed anyway. So if they'll hold statically, you're okay. I like a muffin pan to hold all the parts. You got it numbered one through eight. And then I started here with number one and then went clockwise around one through eight. And I just used Vaseline. I got hydraulic oil in that pumper. So if it needs to stick and hold, I use the Vaseline and just general lube the hydraulic. So we'll go ahead and put this together. So on these, these are the exit check valves. I took them apart and I flipped all these discs. You can buy new ones if you want, but there's the old side. There's a ring there, but you really can't. You can see it, but you can't feel it. But I just went ahead and flipped it anyway. This tractor's at 13,000 hours, so it'll be due. So that's number one. And then that disc goes down. So then we can go ahead and put our main shaft in oil that oil the seal And there it fell into place. So then we've got our top race. Then we've got our top cover. New seal there. New O-ring, let's give that a little Vaseline. That one's stuck, and then we'll do these seals. And of course our shim stack. That we checked earlier so we know they are correct. And then look at these two seals. Almost forgot. Our big O ring. So then look at these two seals. 
it can only go one way. So for assembling these, you want to spin the shaft. You can put your finger in there and feel when the lobe is in the low spot. That'll make for the easiest assembly. Again, these go back in the same holes you use, you pulled them from. And then, of course, you wanted to look for anywhere in here, in the bore. You can feel around. So we'll oil that. Then we'll put our o-ring on our teflon shield and just start threading them in and then we'll come back we'll torque them all they're just going to all be hand tight And just go around till you're done. Now that we've got all these plugs in, started hand tight, we're gonna go ahead and torque them 90 foot pounds. Here it is, pump stabbed up in there, bolt started, started assembling lines. This little piece of sheet metal is back in behind. Between the radiator and the pump. It's kind of a mess, but it's not too bad. So then we'll get the pump tightened, put these two, three lines on, then we'll slide this axle back in, put on the fuel tank, hook it up, then we should be ready to fire it up. Here it is running with no leaks. Please like and subscribe if this helped you out. Thank you all for watching.